Welcome. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jennifer Bloom and I am the executive producer of Sacred Earth Dreaming the Future. And it is my pleasure to welcome you tonight yeah. to our virtual literary reading of selections from the book and to introduce the editor of Sacred Earth, Pamela Eakins. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Well, it is our pleasure to be here tonight with all of you. All of us are the sisters of the Holy Pen. I'm Pamela Eakins. I am a writer, a teacher, a writing teacher, and a publisher. And I founded Sisters of the Holy Pen many years ago. We are a writing group. We have been meeting for many years. We've been a small writing group, but this year we have expanded globally and we will have over 30 people participating tonight in our reading. I would like to thank Jennifer Bloom, whom you just met, for all she has done to support our projects this year. We are very indebted to Jennifer and a lot of other people also who have given so much. And I'd also like to thank Kathy McConnell, our web mistress. And Kathy is, uh, has been in charge of our website, which is sistersoftheholypen.com. So you can look it up tonight. We will be reading from Sacred Earth, our book, Sacred Earth. This is our third volume of poetry this year. Our first volume is Pandemic Corona. And this is where we explored all the different aspects of COVID, everything that was happening to us this year as we move through that experience and then Following on the heels of that book, our book, Death from the Sisters of the Holy Pen. And here we went into all the different aspects of death from so many different points of view. And then into Sacred Earth, which is where we are right now, moving into the sacredness of our planet and what that means to us. We have seven sections in this book, which we will be going through tonight, just selections from each one of the sections. The first one we begin with is part one, origin stories. Origin stories is about who we are, where we come from, and where we are going. And now I'm going to turn it back to Jennifer Bloom for our first poem of the evening. Jennifer. Genesis. attractive, creative, generative power. The result of infinite generations of combinations, mergers and acquisitions, dissolutions and reformations. Starting with the first pinprick of light, Expanding out into the earliest building blocks of atoms, electromagnetic attraction, the falling together of atoms and molecules and cells. I am a compilation of 
of everything that has come before me. I am a compilation of everything that has come before me. I am a compilation of everything that has come before me. And the potential of everything that ever will be. Jennifer Blue. Here, here, purple crocuses sleep, dream of spring. Here, the moon, a scythe of space. Here, an echo of singing bowl. Hineni, hineni, hineni. Here, at the center, a black hole eats universes. Hineni, hineni, hineni. Here, a candle flame. I too hunger for light. Hineni, hineni, hineni. Here, 7.8 billion people. Hineni, hineni, hineni. Here, an oak tree. Hineni, hineni, hineni. Here, silence. Here, an open window, scent of honeysuckle. Here, the red light of summer. Here, lightning bugs. Hineni, hineni, hineni. Here, the spider hums as she weaves. Hineni, hineni. Hineni. Here, matches, seeds, wishbone, beads. Here, the art of incense. Hineni. 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 Here, the shuffle of cards. Hineni. 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 Here, the star studded mystery. Here one dreams. Hineni, Hineni, Hineni. Here the ancestors. Hineni, Hineni, Hineni. Here the sacred vow. Hineni, Hineni, Hineni. Here a blessing received. Hineni, Hineni, Hineni. Here the journey. Here love. Close your eyes. Hineni, Hineni, Hineni. Listen. Hineni, Hineni, Hineni. I I'm here. Judy Ann Morse. Stars in vivo. Plasma, you might know, is the fourth state of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, plasma. 99.9% .9 of the visible universe is made of plasma. Every star is a pulsating, undulating ball of plasma. Interstellar gas clouds, aurora borealis, northern lights, solar wind, polar wind, plasma wind, Lightning, welding arcs, neon and fluorescent lights, 
plasma TVs. Darth Vader's lightsaber. Ignition, flash of insight. Your favorite saint's halo. Sparks, sparkles, bling. The light you imagine coming from a pair of healing, caring hands. We call this love plasma. Universal information collected by a satellite dish of awareness funneled through the crown of the head, to the heart, down the arms, and out the hands. It sets the biofield aglow, spraying rainbow-filled light that seeps through cracks and fills every space, ready and eager to play. That's Dancing with Stars here on Earth. Kathy McConnell. Sacred woman, skin made of desert sand, rivers flow through my veins. My hair is made of willow leaves and butterflies tickle when I wink. I am a part of the many and the many are part of me. Moon and sun light my path. Death and rebirth in an endless dance. Elsa Ramos Elias. Importance, breathing of ice. Greenland ice cap, dazzling Arctic ice, Antarctica, where warm ocean waters lick away at the underside of floating ice shelves, warming Gaia's global cooling system. We breathe in this planet home with every breath. We ingest weather daily. Glaciers and ice sheets collapsing, retreating, liquidating the living, breathing, cooling body of the world. Give rise to heat, dry winds circulating the globe as storms, floods, sea level rise Dire drought unleashes unpredictable change, lightning strikes, fire. We touch the earth with every breath we take. We breathe in our home with every breath. We ingest weather daily. Linda Hennessy Roth. Earth, I am. Your fire accentuates and facilitates the fires of transformation and transmutation to promote evolution, which is mine too. Your water quenches my thirst for knowledge and information so that I become the being I was intended to be at my own creation. Your wind soothes me and disperses my sadness so that I look away and up into the sky of clarity between the clouds. You are earth, you are me, and I come forth from you who comes from all that was, is, and ever will be. And I am made of all that too, since I am you. Jan Zemanski Edgerton. Summer rain. Raindrops on my face. 
flowered on the oak tree leaves. The rhythm played on this earth through thousands of years. But me, just the visitor in this timeless moment. Elena was. Thank you, Elena. We are visitors in this timeless moment. And now we move to part two of the book, which is called I Invader. We are visitors. We are also invaders and we feel invaded. Here we look at how earth hurts us, how we hurt each other, how we are hurt by diseases, by disorders, by natural disasters. We ask ourselves, what is the meaning? And we ask, how do we heal? Amanda. Fire threat. Put the ladder up near the roof line and hope firefighters will climb it to put out fires on your roof. Lay your shovels out by a bed of dirt and hope firefighters can smother flames. Put out buckets of water when you're ready. Leave the garden hose in plain sight. Connected to those words. Pack what you want to save into your car. Kiss your house goodbye. Drive away and pray. In the empty town, the wild turkeys saunter across the yard. Deer have no fear, and the puma drinks from the water. Amanda. Embers, feathery wisps of dead ancients flutter before my eyes. Onto my hand, one rests, and I say a prayer for the forest that is no more. Also congealed in these drifters, young children's toys, beloved family pets, and perhaps the double ash of a loved one's remains, fluttering all before my eyes, holding the tears of many, my gut is wrecked and aching, forcing nutrients so I can survive to hold you, resting these embers, tens of thousands in these little shards before my eyes, a great transmutation. Water tankers detonating, helicopters whirring, through the choking haze, I struggle to stand tall and nourished as the world burns down, burns down around me. Raven Lakins. Grieving sadness. Our home with its old beams and glorious balcony, cottage and studio. 
the land surrounding us, the beautiful tall dancing trees, the golden meadows, our home of collected cultural items, piano, handcrafted everything, are all charred ruins with only melted metal, charcoal sticks that were tall trees just a day ago, covering the ground. All are destroyed by the fire, covering our lands that were destroyed by the fire that raced up our last chance road, destroying six of the 10 homes near us. Also now only charcoal and melted metal. Any living thing survived only by running or flying. We now find shelter in the Marriott Hotel on West Side Santa Cruz with a blank canvas for our future. Although we have both been very creative in our lives, as David has said, at over 70 years, we no longer have the fierce energy it takes to clear and rebuild five devastated acres. Or for me, already physically injured, even to paint the huge campuses I have used in the last 15 years. My heart goes out to David, who at 22 with no cash, but only chutzpah, borrowed a small bit of money, bought five acres and took down an old Swiss barn to use for beams and siding and built by himself with whatever could be salvaged from the dump yards, the charming house, studio, cottage we've lived in for over 33 years. After my medical retirement from Cabrillo College for paralysis recovery, I've spent 15 years learning to walk and exercise on our balcony, overlooking the meadows and tall trees that I love so much as did the morning doves that searched the top branches. Of course, it's easy to spout no attachment. As a friend once commented about looking at the many cultural craft items that filled their home. At that time and for certain now, I realized that although I always have understood the idea of change, loss and gain, the relationship to one's surrounding, natural or man-made, is better felt as love, as nourishment to our being, as a nurturing relationship. So as David and I sit in our neutral, non-distinctive hotel room, certainly aware of our physical protection, being very unattached and unalert, there is nevertheless for us the deeper truth of the richness and appreciation of all that expresses beauty, nature, and heart. So in the void ahead, David and I will discover what it is that we will either create or will meet us. As Guru Mai once said, smile at your destiny. A new beginning of course emerges. I didn't do love much that was taken from us and will move with whatever presents itself, trusting in the universe's cosmic flow of creating and co-creating. Right now, David is talking to his realtor who has also been evacuated from her home in Boulder Creek. We are hardly alone in having 10 minutes to grab what is near and run to escape. David wheeled me out the door on my wheelchair, still recovering from a bad broken leg, no end to challenge for me, with wild flames shooting up the trees over our meadow. Me with bare feet, grabbing clothes nearby. I had no clarity nor physical ability to get anything. Would have loved collecting my piano music, one painting, a few pieces of jewelry, but at least my paintings, which haven't been eliciting much response stored away, are all collected in books printable by Amazon. That's their future and I wish them well. My piano, musical 
recorders, 75 original canvases and other collections I would have loved to have given to somebody in the future, but will not. It's a familiar story now of people losing homes, of death and dying, of loss. I will probably never forget the holocaustic sight of our loved land, a dead corpse, brutalized. My empathy for all those getting through these times is deepened. But I do so appreciate those who responded with great heart, as I know all of you will when you hear of our and others' plights. My dear friend Marty came out the first day here, knocked on our hotel door to give me a hug, loving hug. Adriana loyally supports us and comes so we can buy the small stuff we need. Buy a new walker to keep up my recovery exercises. David looks on the internet for a new place for us to live. So this is our news. The yellowed smoke sky outside still survives, as will we. All my collected quotes for inspiration burnt in my, is with my files, but there are a world of them available in the world. Love, Marjorie. Marjorie Holcomb. What has been burned? What has been burned before is more likely to survive. The giant redwood hollowed out by fire in some century unknown stands still thick with bark having proofed itself when extreme blazes swept through on the wind that howled, playing its needles like a haunting earthly symphony. Now is when I seed, now is when I cover the newly fertilized ground with potential. Soon the rains will come. Soon the rains will soften the land and seedlings will spring up in a proud and ready and innocent circle around me ready to begin their new day. Beauty, triumphant. I have learned to steal myself. I was made to do what I do and I will continue. Eagle woman. Just being. Living in my life's lowest common denominator, simple routine, sequestered mostly. Silence happens more than ever. Thankfully, lovely thoughts of coffee cafes fade into memory of happy times. Memories are what I can visit anytime sometimes even more vibrant, more alive than looking out the window. Sudden interruption, big earth moving machines, dredging out the lake, noise churning, devouring built up silt and slime so fresh rainwater can refill and bring back the fish, the waterfall, the birds, 
destruction before new life, new life before destruction again, endlessly repeating. I am not lonely in this attentive vigil, feeling clean, feeling holy. Jessica Webb. An earthly journey, each moment endless possibilities, inspiring, changing, knowing, discarding old ways to replace with new. Silence the mind, expand into unity, watching, listening, feeling, opening my heart to tenderness. Act now, get off the couch, walking, talking, caring, loving all creation. I see beauty, I feel grace, I am held. Tony Buckner. Our mother, our mother is generous. She provides shelter, food, and spiritual sustenance. She provides beauty. She provides amazing abundance and variety. She provides a platform for all life. She provides all that we need. Our mother is generous. Our mother changes and yet abides. She abides despite all the noise of humans, animals, insects, fish. She abides and bestows changing seasons. She abides despite our ignorant, abusive ways of life. She abides despite our nurturing ways. She abides and bestows abundance. She abides and creates life as we know it. Our mother is angry. She bursts forth from her molten center, spraying heat and fire. She thunders in our sky and rain pours forth, flooding our lives. She blows loudly and homes are flattened. She withholds soothing rains and the earth becomes a desert. Our mother is nurturing. She provides rich soil to plant and harvest her bounty. She provides multiple bodies of water oceans, rivers, lakes, streams, waterfalls. She provides infinite beauty to soothe our souls. She provides myriad paths towards salvation. She embodies all elements, earth, water, wind, and fire. Our mother teaches, we are all one. Sharon Jaya Command. Thank you, Jaya. Our mother is indeed full of contradictions, or so it appears to us. And now we enter part three, the Queen's Cohen. And within the Queen's Cohen, we examine paradoxes. We immerse in the strangeness of being alive on this planet. We learn that what seems like destruction may be all about creating health, may be all about creating wholeness. At the same time, it may be infinitely difficult for us to understand. And now we go to I am Despain. Long live the queen. Somewhere in the dense rainforest of India lives the king cobra, a most venomous snake. One bite can kill 20 people or an elephant olive green, black tongued, 12 feet, 20 pounds, golden irises, feared by most. Winter ends, 
temperatures rise. Testosterone quells his appetite for food. His only desire now is for her, for sex. Under the leafy canopy, she leaves trails of pheromones for him. He comes, wrapping his body tightly around her, his vigorous headbutts signal his desire. Under the leafy canopy, they intertwine. He licks, touches, and caresses her, full of desire. But she carries the eggs of another king. Perhaps he senses her subtle apprehension. Suddenly his desire turns deadly. He squeezes her neck with his vice-like jaw, pumping her full of venom. They writhe in a tightly twisted embrace. Blood flows from her mouth in a sad and delicate stream. She slowly dies, but not without a fight. He attempts to swallow her lifeless body, but the pregnant queen is too large. So he abandons her to the forest floor where she becomes a banquet a sacrament, a blessing, a rich feast for Gaia's smallest, most vulnerable creatures. Her body feeds the earth and his loss becomes her gain. His failure is her triumph. I am Despain. Future swept out to sea. As ocean greets me as lover, embracing with roar and crash, a squadron of pelicans flies through its arms in the great coming, in the great going, the endless ebb and flow of life, not future. Vast wonderment at the miracle of changing of shifting tides of the undertow that rips reality from under our naked feet as time rushes out to meet its fate at the hands of the infinite sea. How does future fit in with this surging life? Here at the subliminal edge of the world, future is just a word whose vibrations loosen our illusion of control. How about living without future? How about being right now? How about allowing the emerging? Something will emerge as future, as time crumbles, the sun will continue to rise and set. The waves will come to shore. Embrace the emergence of what will be. Encourage life. Allow the flow. Relax the vessel so that a future of love of life may emerge. Impossible to control as that future is always transformative death. Carolyn Ayers. Earth's haikus. Autumn. Last drops of blood running back to my, to my roots, escaping the freeze of death. Winter. King of the North has sentenced. Queen awaits on frozen ground. Her death by a thousand cuts. Spring. Out from the dead, the rebels are rising. Blooms and twigs uproar. Summer, 
berries, birds, and dragonflies, inebriated senses gorge on your luscious sensuality. Elsa Ramos Elias. She knows what she's doing. Connecting with the earth's presence in any form, ocean, mountain, tree, flower, brings peace and centered calmness to my nervous system, to my body. Feeling grounded, my heart and being open in gratitude to her and her gifts freely given. We have such an opportunity to shift our consciousness as the earth comes to a crisis, a point of no return, she might have to throw us off in order to live. Are we so daft that we can't see that? She bears the scars of our unconsciousness, our destructiveness. There are cycles of destruction in nature, but it is a complete cycle of dying and rebirth. Our destruction is out of dominance and power over. Hers is about the flow of life. Are we so afraid of life? So afraid of life that we have to destroy it in order to control it? Because that's what we're doing. I don't know what it will take. And I don't know when we will awake. We're at a precipice. By not honoring the beautiful earth around us, by rejecting her gifts, we end up not honoring life or each other. What the earth has endured, all of us have endured at some level. It seems so simple. Just honor her, appreciate her, be in awe of her beauty, her ever-present movement be in wonderment of what she provides and the way the gifts are provided. Honor her cycles. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. Do we? Mara McBratney. Thank you, Mara. Well, she tries to throw us off. All kinds of things happen. And yet so frequently we find ourselves falling in love with her again and again and again. And now we enter part four of Sacred Earth. Part four is called Love Stories. Here we experience falling in love with the whole of the cosmos, falling in love with earth, falling in love with earth as ourselves, falling in love with the whole of the universe. And now, Carolyn. Proposal to the sacred earth. Sweet beloved, the white morning sky floating above us is like a wedding dress inviting us into the marriage. But I sit here gazing and prefer your greens and browns. Today, I will lay upon you belly to belly and listen as we join ourselves the way molecules sometimes merge and become each other. Will you marry me? Let me devote myself to this new lovemaking. Mm. Carolyn Bridget Flynn. Mm. The kiss. The tulips are almost open. It's February and I forgot when I planted them, but pots of tulips are sprouting this week, I think, 
they'll open up and we'll see their colors. I am constantly mesmerized by this backyard, by this earth where I live on this continent at the edge, edge, edge of the Pacific Ocean. How can she sprout so many colors? My eyes are grateful to be able to drink in blue sky and then twilight, red tulips, red hummingbird's breast, your pink lips, your cream colored breasts. Oh, and then after looking, the rest of my senses line up, pulsing. They want to touch, taste, feel the nerves of the planet, kiss mm -hmm. everywhere. Jean Mahoney. The Wild Ones Selections. I've always seen them. I have always wanted to run into their embrace, greet them, dance with them, lay down on their forest beds with them, float on the sea with them. I have always known them somehow. Nobody told me this, it simply was. So there was no need to tell anyone else that my other family was out there in the wild. The domestic dog gone wild when we two children glimpsed on a for who we, we two children glimpsed on a deep forest path sitting camouflaged under the trees. I greeted him with a glad cry, ran up to him to hug and pet. He wagged back, licked me. My little friend Eileen stepped up to do the same. He bit her and then he melted away from us back into leafy darkness. It never occurred to me to be afraid. It never occurred to her not to be. When I was an adult, the native elder told me that the animals sense us and they choose whether or not to show themselves as they could easily ghost past us, unseen, unnoticed on their own secret pathways. So if you encounter them in the wild, they have decided to let you see them. They have chosen to approach. And it is the deliberate offering of medicine, mm. of a gift, or a blessing. Mm. Unearned grace on a hot day in the heart of the Canadian woods. A herd of antler-crowned elk just under the trees. I jumped out of the truck in awe, approached them, my heart swelling. And as if deigning to grant me an audience, they allowed me to draw near and stand before them, with them. We floated together. They calmly looked into me. We held each other's gaze. Then they turned away and disappeared as if I had dreamed them or witnessed a miracle that can't be spoken about. The ones I never met directly and would only glimpse. The coyotes, the goddesses' dogs, the black bears, the bobcats, the deer and fawns, dolphins and eagles, and the otters eating their lunch. The feeling, the brush of the other nations who live here, their wordless power, their ease, the flow of them. The feeling again of having witnessed a miracle for a moment. The night on a vision quest, alone in the woods, where I cried and I prayed for relief from my aloneness and my heartache about belonging nowhere among my fellows. And then the bushes near me rattled and clattered loudly over and over as someone large moved through and my heart clenched in fear. Small animals began to run back and forth on the tree branches above my head. One of them, unseen, ran right over my foot. <laughs> As the night waned and my eyes tried to close, gritty with fatigue, all my thoughts gone to sleep now, my soul rose up and rested closer to the surface of me. And just like that, my heart's door suddenly cracked open and I was filled with a wordless rush, a rising tide, a quiet little chorus. 
I had cried out in that wild darkness and prayed for help in my desolation. And now, as if the inner light was finally dawning, I laughed out loud in wonder. They had answered me without words, showed me, demonstrated it over and over. As you were crying about being alone, we were rattling through the bushes next to you like companionable neighbors, <laughs> running in the tree branches over your head, hunting just above you. You were so much a part of us, we even sent one of us to run right over your feet. Did that wake you up? Do you get it now? You belong to us and we allow you to be near us, to see us, to encounter us like the elk and the wild dog, and like this night among us all. Do you understand that you are not alone, that you belong? Will you take our gift we offer? It is not always given. Will you tell the others that we are still here, that the invitation, subtle as it is, is available to any who come in reverence without fear? available to any willing to embrace and be embraced, to sit with rather than to sit above. Spread the word, human. The belonging, the embrace is right outside your door and it always has been. Join the dance. Kathy Carlson. Calligraphy in the sky, flights of thousands of birds, birds riding high in the sky, birds folding and unfolding in one motion, in one motion, shaping themselves into instinctual patterns, rearranging quick, all new, now gone. Twisting of birds again, and again, emerging as a swift tide, flowing in and out upon a canvas of sky. A master artist is dancing with the birds, seeing now the turning of a feathered pen, calligraphy's black brush strokes, writing upon a rapidly changing sky, black thin lines curved at the top, broad lines spinning down, shapes of living, shapes of living. What is so beautifully written in this sent letter to be read with upwardly turning eyes? What is so beautifully written to be read with upwardly turning eyes? Cheryl Bann. Erotic Ecology, an earthen home, shapely, curved with arched nichos anticipating treasures. The memory of whales sashaying in deep blue water, filled with star song streaming through latitudes of desires. Fragrant flowers scent the air, reminding me of paradise, while a Kiva fireplace stacked with cedar, oak, and pinon, ignites to fill my room with desert aromas. Earth, water, air, and fire, so sensual. The truest alchemical elements, provocateurs in the creation of a biology of wonder. It takes a lifetime to craft a life that acknowledges its innate sacredness, but peeling dense layers isn't my primal task. It's following the scent of passion like the sharks do, weaving back and forth in the wake of the goddess they adore. A purple mist descends in the highlands, greeting lovers in their ascent to a bed of ferns, the pubic hair of Pele. The sacred offers a constant deep ecstasy, a quiet rumbling 
a loud command to wake up, wake up to my natural state. It flows through the bones of my memory, scrub clean enough from a complicit amnesia held too long. This is my incense, the holy ash of my body and life that I return home as sacred. I am filled with gratitude and humility that I can contribute at least that much as a pilgrimage to my place on earth, as my life force remembers love eternal. Norma Estela Tarango. Thank you, Norma. Let us awaken, let us awaken. And when we awaken, we awaken into the enchanted garden. And this is part five of our book, The Enchanted Garden of Our Sacred Earth. And here we enter in to the place where the sacred earth speaks to us in mysterious ways. Here we find our very deepest meaning. And now Lise. Some enchanted forest. I love to play the game of walking toward my future self. I imagine that we are both still becoming. I imagine that we meet in some enchanted forest. I imagine that we stand for a moment and face one another. And then she motions first and takes my hand and I walk into her and become her. And then we begin our walk together of further becoming until we meet our yet future self again and again and again, and always in some enchanted forest. Lise Hamilton. Metote, into this kaleidoscope of chaos, we gather in stillness to watch a setting sun, catch the last light and hold it in our hands. A sacred, blessed heart flame lights the fire at the center. Each soul connects and the drumming begins together we form a new Lexus. Messages unfold beneath a majesty of stars and a council of trees. Space and time dissolves as we merging ever deeper into the sacred ground to begin the beginning, a dream walking through the darkness. Traveling ever closer to the cosmos inside, the black sun behind the sun rising, glowing, dancing in the shadows, the flickering light begins to glint and glimmer through the branches like fairies in the night, playfully echoing the voices and language of the birds and beasts surrounding us guide our journey. In the morning, the last stars embrace their sister dawn and dissipate into nothing. Soft rattling is heard and the dreamers are slowly aroused, hearts beating in unison and the distant sound of a drum calling us back to the center, to the fire, to bid farewell to the gentle spirits of the twilight. The flame in the fire turns green. We are awakening, newly born with the sun, alive and luminous, elementals inviting us deeper in, their long, warm and comforting touch, reborn, regenerated, 
today we begin to see with new eyes resurrected into a new dream. Carol McLeod. You belong to the stone people. The stone beckoned me on the walk to the woods. It lay there exposed, bigger than the rest. It's hard rock etched with a cliff-like landscape. A piece of worn granite is all it was. Yet it called my name. It wanted to share its wisdom with me. I wanted to listen and hear its knowing medicine. I picked it up. It fit into the palm of my hand so snugly as if it was meant for me, my hand. I took it home, eager to learn its secrets. I held it and closed my eyes. I was moved to paint its shape three ways. They merged into three different figures, three stone people talking to each other. They each looked so wise, the one in the center, clearly the leader, but they spoke in unison. We are your sacred stone people. You belong to us. We are here to remind you of your sacred vow to share your medicine with the people of earth. It is time for you to begin. You carry the wisdom within. We are here to remind you. We are here to protect you. We are here to guide you. Your destiny is to sow the seeds of peace. It is not a mistake. Do not doubt your inner knowing. You have earned your rightful place to speak for the stone people, the keepers of the records of earth. Your medicine is needed now. You are healed enough. You know. Let go of doubt and trust your intuition. It is us showing you the way. Make an offering. It will lead you on the path of peace. It will open the door, the door you are seeking. Dig deep. We are the messengers of earth and you are too. You belong to the stone people. You belong to the earth. Denise Jacob. Grandmother Ocean. She speaks to me in a language made of dreams, a language of the heart. Just being in her presence always makes me feel better. One day when I was feeling rather blue, I drove down the hill to be by her side. I took off my shoes. A nice long walk on the beach was just what the doctor ordered. The sky was blue, the sun was shining. A luminous shell caught my eye. As I gazed upon it at just the right angle, it shone rainbow colors, beautiful colors, colors kissed by the sun. I slipped it in my pocket and thanked Grandmother Ocean for this exquisite gift and swore I would keep it forever and ever. Then I saw some footprints. Someone had been there before me. I wondered if they had needed the solace of Grandmother Ocean too. I followed the footprints, mine walking right next to theirs. We could be friends. Then I spied a slipper shell. I stopped to pick it up. If I could find another one, I would have a pair, a pair of slipper shells, just the right size for a fairy. With my treasures in my pocket for safekeeping, I kept walking until, surprise, surprise, down on the wet sand at my feet was the most beautiful starfish I had ever seen. I wondered, what are you doing so far away from your home? I thought I saw it looking at me, looking back at me. 
I sat down next to it. I wanted us to be friends. Then I turned to Grandmother Ocean. I felt her love wash over me, so much so that I slipped into a space where I could hear her speaking to me in a language I had never heard before. We were communing through thoughts and visions that colored my mind. The crystal blue sky shining under the warmth of the sun was dreaming about rainbows. It was happy and I wanted to be happy too. But so many things in my life were pulling at me and bringing me down. Grandmother Ocean would understand. She would know how to help me. Then I noticed how she is constantly being pulled in all directions too, pulled by the tides and the waves. Waves that build up and then come crashing down, exploding into a huge spray of wet fireworks, breaking up the energy into a dancing scurry of foam, like fingers fluttering across a piano. Her dancing foam made me smile. It said, lighten up Jeannie and come dance with Grandmother Ocean. So I began to dance right there on the beach, dancing in all her whipped up foam as her fingers played the bumblebee boogie. Then I gazed down at the starfish. It wanted to go home, so I gently picked it up, thanked it and set it down into the water. A wave came in and took it back out to sea. I waited, anticipating that the starfish might come right back. Sometimes they do, but she didn't come back. She was home and I had made it back home too, back home to myself. Thank you, Grandmother Ocean. Jeannie Goldman. The invitation, you are invited to live your highest self now, to cease the waiting, to cease the hoping, to cease both the wait and the hope for someone else to grant you the permission to live as you are called to be, to be the living symbol of your highest vision. This symbolization can be characterized as embodiment. Can you feel it well up within you? Can you feel the power of your truth? You are the vessel, the chalice. You are the living DNA of source and spirit. You embody your lineage, your caretaker, your joy. You are the host of spirit of source, the enchantress of the nations, enchanted universe mobilized. You are the flow, the holy body in motion, the embodiment of Christ consciousness, not to be confused with the illumined one, but one who walks with splendor, one who raises ships through tides of change. You who program the very cells, the identity of source within. You are chosen to merge with God in a way which dispenses peace, wholeness, worthiness, compassion, care, destiny, longevity, wellness, all the birthrights of creation all of which you carry in your alchemist sack. For you to model what glory oneness with God can be for anyone willing to journey inward, willing to traverse the labyrinth. You are the guide, the Holy Ghost, the generation of elaborate causation, which is in fact the beauty of creation. You are creation walking. Your gifts to the earth will be many. They will embed upon the molecular structure of being. For you will teach causation, the glorious unity of God's mind to your own. 
You are the wise wonder of resplendent universe in motion. You shall be free to do your work upon this earth for you are a devotee of the one God of unity whose dynamic fracture is in all things. You know this already. You practice this lifestyle. You are now stepping through the gate of your own resiliency. For embodiment is a two-way path, one for God's creative light to flow in, one for your temporal experience to flow out. This dual highway creates the appropriate tension for wisdom from light to enter into balance on the human plane. Your embodiment is necessary. It will heal many. It will raise the vibration of the species for your gift to this world is you. Do you and all will align. You are invited to step across a great threshold. Your gifts will continue to be unveiled, revealed, all in this exotic time. All is well, we are one. You will be well in your divinely appointed progress, for we are one, sacred and holy for generations to come. Be well, stay alert, watch for messages. You are invited. Ariadne Connor. Well, hallelujah, sister. <laughs> I accept. I accept. Thank you, Ariadne. I accept your invitation. And now we enter part six, the beauty way. And here, our deep appreciation for our cosmic mother flows out. Our deep appreciation for our sacred earth. Here, we learn how to walk in beauty. And we begin with a walk with Amanda. My walk with Amanda. We walked out onto a fall day, granddaughter Amanda and I, Together, we walked only the very small steps afforded by her short legs of two years. My figure walked shrouded in life's griefs. My mother's sure departure from life wound tightly together with the end of a love and who I was and what I was doing in the world. Amanda walked jacketed in her fuzzy pink bunny coat, replete with hood and bunny ears and her sense of wonder. Moving forward inch by inch and then stopping. I watched her wonder at the universe of leaves at our feet welcoming us. With each step, Amanda wondered anew as the next crisp and crackly miracle at her feet. An ageless, worldless, wordless invitation made brand new with Amanda's curious senses, both summoning us and welcoming us where we walked. As I held her hand and I stood beside her, I allowed myself to be open and astonished by, the, by her great revelations. Revelations of everything, everywhere, lovingly calling to us. I stood wooed by the warmth of a compassionate sun and the kindness of the family of trees above us. I closed my eyes and became a part of the breeze and the benevolence of the blue sky and the embrace of the crisp, chill air. I realized everything was a part of the process of love growing us all. Life was, is, and will be perfect. As sure as my walk with Amanda was perfect, every circumstance in my life was perfect. Everywhere, everything was perfect. 
To deny that perfection required I deny the beauty and joy and delight in Amanda's blue eyes. To deny that wonder and perfectness was impossible. I could not see a beginning or an end to the experiences of my life, only a circle of continuity. Suddenly I understood everything I had ever striven to know. To deny the unity of my despair, strife and confusion with the beauty of my granddaughter and this fall day and the perfectness of her world was impossible. Everything I thought I had understood was distilled into one simple knowing. It is always perfect. I became lost and found in nature's sweet lullaby to appease all things wild, singing, it is always perfect. It is always perfect. It is always perfect. Pamela Wiley. We will walk over the sand as the camels and the rattlesnakes over the sand my fingers slide on your skin over the wave as the surfer and the moon over the wave my silence swims close your eyes my mighty shadow do not be afraid we will walk over the streets and over the wall, over the hills and over the grass, over the struggles and over the lies, over the forgiveness and over the smiles. Under the sky, I have a question to ask. What about the place where you will shake the sand? Remember to shake the question that orbits in your mind. What is the answer to go to how to release gravity? Where is the road, the beginning of the trip? Over the night, I made a promise that I have to keep. Close your eyes my mighty shadow, do not be afraid. We will walk over the valleys and over the seas, over the light and over the dark, over the lifetimes and over the stars, one soul with you. Elena Vas. Contentment calls, content to walk on your skin of green slopes and parched sand dunes, content to quench my thirst from pristine mountain streams, content to nourish my body from bountiful flora and fauna from fields and oceans. Content to chill my core as a fallen angel in drifts of glistening snow. Content to lie naked, unencumbered, unashamed, empowered under blankets of stars. In beauty, grace, and generosity, you sustain us all. Your health and vibrancy, your holy right to purity is my sacred call. Tony Buckner. Earth. It is summer. 
July at its end. My hiking boots send up puffs of beige soil. The opal Queen Anne's lace fans out toward me. My morning ritual begins. Walk the earth. Invite white buffalo woman to anchor my steps on my eastern traverse of the medicine wheel. My destination is a Sophia Christ dragon stone. A red heart is painted within the embrace of the golden dragons. An ocean rock gessoed and embossed with images. I place her on Sweeney Ridge, the overlook to Crystal Springs Reservoir, San Francisco Bay just beyond, east, the direction of new beginnings, on a planet overridden with a coronavirus. It is time to become comfortable with the unknown, uncertainty everywhere. I step and I make a commitment to be in the now. I step and I bless the earth. I step and renew, reinforce, build my dedication to the Sophia Christ consciousness. From my crown chakra down through my root chakra, the energy courses into Mother Gaia. I pray to be a conduit for the new 5D earth. A conscious, loving earth begs to be birthed, to be given form, to be nurtured. Return to love. Always the invocation is return to love. Love the earth. Love my body, my mind, my spirit. Love my neighbor. I surrender. It is enough. I am enough. My prayers are heard. I am supported. I am a channel of love and light to be the transformed human consciousness that heals our planet. Donna Bleffin. Return to earth, return to love. Thank you, Donna. And as we return, 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 we enter into our sacred vows. And now we enter part seven of our book, Sacred Earth. And if any of the parts of this book I would love to be able to have all the poets read their poems from this section. So marvelous it is. Here we enter into our dreams, our commitments, our vows, the ways we move into protecting the planet. And it is all so deep and so moving, what we dream of, what we stand for, how we will use our voices, especially our voices in writing and speaking, how we will use our voices in protection of all that is sacred. And we begin with Roberta. What is your dream? In my dream, gross national happiness is the measure of success. The larger the numbers of satisfied citizens, the more successful we collectively are. In my dream, there's adequate supply for everyone. No one needs to be hungry. No one needs to be without shelter. No one needs to be without love. In my dream, love fills the empty space that lives in each one of us. Love fills it and it spills over. There is enough love for everyone. No one needs to live without love. In my dream, truth, justice, empathy, integrity, and compassion are planet-wide values 
we are all accountable to each other to express and uphold these values and to expect the same from everyone. In my dream, those greedy and powerful people who can never have enough money and power to fill that empty space inside are able to open their hearts to love, which will fill the empty space to overflowing. In my dream, urges to dominate are given healthy expression so that un it's unnecessary to plunder. There will be some of us that need to have more. Most of us just need enough for the feeling of abundance. In my dream, crime is unnecessary because everyone has enough. Criminal minds are able to find expressions in ways that don't hurt other people. In my dream, the dominator model has morphed into the partnership model. Collaboration and cooperation in solving ecological health, economic, emotional, and spiritual challenges and crises provide enough stimulation. In my dream, we learn to live in partnership and balance with the earth. We heal our suffering planet and slowly reverse the damage we have done. Through education, the population stabilizes. In my dream, diversity is valued as dynamic, inspiring, and educational, enriching our lives. We are different only on a small percentage of the surface. We are the same inside. In my dream, Male and female are in full partnership. There's no more subordination of women. Full expression of anima and anima, yin and yang, active and receptive, emitting and receiving, creates a synergy that generates a better world. In my dream, birth health is a birthright. There's adequate access to needed medical services, these services are not so much needed because most of the population is healthy. In my dream, the spiritual and faith traditions of the planet are able to overcome the differences that are superficial and agree that we are all the same underneath. There's only one, and love is a common denominator. Forgiveness, thanksgiving, and loving kindness are the tools of transcendence. In my dream, the innate potential of all humans is free to be expressed. We can move beyond survival to the robust expression of our humanity. In my dream, we are moving into a golden age of peace, prosperity, and fellowship. After the Kali Yuga, we enter the radiance, swords to plowshares, Resources directed spawn a renaissance of arts, science, and spirituality. Roberta Wessel Walter. It has always been the source of our first othering, distancing ourselves from the dirt in our bones, elevating ourselves from the apes and the fleas, fearing the mortality first witnessed in the seasons, we set in on reversing time, on our bellies remaining full, on our children remaining adorned with the relics of their lineage. We seemingly succeeded. We were smart like that, depending on who we were, which resources were at our disposal, what truths we could and could not comprehend. I have a strange compassion today for the origin story of all ills. Each ism that divides and kills endlessly chained to someone's probably white, probably male, long ago longing for existence, for survival, lost to the thrill of the conquest, the taste for blood, the lessons in power, lost to not knowing obvious things like that water really is life, like love. But here we are, no matter the we, collectively facing the big T truth of it now, 
what has always been is and will forever be our essential belonging to the earth without exception our essential belonging to the earth without exception jessa marino Reading for Melanie Dewberry. Lay your medicine down. Lay your medicine down, down into the dark soil, into the sacred hands of mother. She speaks with her relation, rain, laughs with humor of her sister, son, listens to the secrets of the wind. Family, these are hers. They belong to you. Together they will grow your medicine, your you-ness. Earth Mother is the original storyteller, the soil of the food of life. You, her student, are required to relinquish all that separates you from her. It is such a tiny ask for such a beautiful healing. Worry not about if it is done correctly or if you are the person. Question not your validity. These are the sedu seductive thoughts that lure so many away from themselves. Lay your medicine on each and every being. Medicine is a prayer that inhabits and cures the loneliness of false separation. Your medicine has divine wisdom and healing prosperities for you First, take your own medicine in each moment. Embody the prayer that it is. Embody its first property, humility. I, Gloria in excelsis Deo, Melanie Dewberry. The Intergalactic Adventure of Swirling in Space. When we consider ourselves as of Earth, when we understand we are eternal, when we know ourselves as sacred, only then will we comprehend our future. Carolyn Ayers. I waded in. I waded in. The Holy One says, it does not count unless you go under. In going under, you face your fear. In staying under, you discover what you are made of. Submerged, I stayed down for lifetimes without dying. And still I remained until the pain became too intense to bear. And I began to lose my grasp. I needed the power of air. Then suddenly, as in birth, I began to kick mightily, crazy like a mad woman, fighting till I broke the barrier, surfaced on sacred earth, at last gasping a gasp, clasping 
the next gyration, I screamed my first cry, not I can't, but I'll try. Then I felt a kind of immense elation. Maybe, maybe, maybe I had learned something. It was then I felt you holding me. It was then I heard your heart making music. Eagle woman. of everything that ever will be. Thank you, Jennifer. And here we come to the end of our reading tonight. This is our third and last reading for 2020. It has been a glorious year with the Sisters of the Holy Pen, as we have celebrated our writing, our poetry, and our prose in these three books, Pandemic Corona, our first book, Death, our second book, and Sacred Earth, our third book, in this very fateful year. All three books are available on Amazon, on Barnes and Noble, and in bookstores throughout the world. I would like to thank you all, all the sisters of the Holy Pen, and all those who have joined us this evening. I am in deep appreciation, and I think I can speak for all of us by saying I think we are all in very deep appreciation. And now I am going to play us out with the bowl the way I played us in. Thank you so much, and good night. <laughs> <laughs>